Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Broda and in this edition of Human Rights Heroes we are recognizing women from around the globe who have demonstrated exceptional courage and leadership in advancing for peace, justice, human rights, gender equality, and women's empowerment. Today I am joined by Siri Khan, otherwise known as June, Charon Siri, a Thai human rights activist who is being honored with the Secretary of State's International Woman of Courage Award. Welcome June. Thank you. June is a human rights lawyer who was very active during Thailand's period of military rule following the May 2014 coup d'etat. Shortly after the coup, June co-founded Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, a lawyers collective providing pro bono legal services in human rights cases and documenting human rights issues under the military junta. In addition to leading the documentation team, June has represented clients charged with offenses related to the exercise of their rights to peaceful, peaceful assembly and expression and political, politically motivated charges. As a result of her work defending human rights under the junta, June has faced constant harassment and persecution, including several criminal charges brought against her in retribution for her work. June continues to work tirelessly to document human rights abuses during the most recent period of junta rule in Thailand. June, thank you for your willingness to share your story. What influenced your decision to get involved as an advocate for victims' rights, and what challenges have you faced dealing with this? So actually, my fascination in working for human rights and victims of human rights violation started when I was about 18, 19 years old. After actually, I returned from the US after one year as an exchange student in Milwaukee. So when I went back, there was a um, tsunami disaster that hit the coast of Thailand. So I volunteered down to the deep south where it was affected and devast uh, devastated. And there I, for the first time as a very young high schooler, I met uh, seaboard people who um, didn't have you know, Thai national, so they are not Thai citizens, and they were uh, beaten up, beaten up. One guy was beaten up by um, authority, Thai authority, accusing him of stealing a radio. And um, at that time, I felt like, you know, what's going on and how can I help him? Mm -hmm. And then one of my senior student volunteer, he said, if you want to help the society, you get to the victim and you need to have knowledge. So what would be the knowledge that I can help the victim? So he said, maybe law. So I decided to study law. And that's how I started, you know, gearing toward the path of human rights lawyer after graduation and I started working as a human rights lawyer. Great. Um, what is the role of civil society in documenting these human rights abuses that you see in Thailand? It, it's very in, uh, essential for civil society because um, as a documenter of human rights violations because we are the one who can access to victims and as part of that work as a lawyer we need good and well-established evidence-based information and documentation to give evidence to court and also to access remedies to the victim. So it's very important that civil society can operate in a safe environment without retaliation by any actors. Who has been the biggest influence on your life? And what lessons did this person teach you? Um, there are actually many people that <laughs> influenced me in my life. I can't say which person is the biggest influence. But recently, I think my motivation to work day to day um, comes from young, brave hearts of student activists who are my clients. Since the coup d'etat in 2014, um, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, my organization, and myself, we represent many of the student activists who peacefully protest against the military ruling. They're brave, they're courageous, and they're, they're actually you know, the one who would tell me not to give up and stand up for the rights of the people. One of them, which I'd like to mention, is Jatupat or Pai. He's now serving a jail term um, for sharing a BBC Thai news mm -hmm. about the king. So um, he's the one who would you know, encourage me that it's not going to be easy <laughs> with them and also with the fight. So I would say over the course of my work, the clients, those who stand up for democracy and human rights are actually the most influence that motivated me to work. That's fantastic. 
Um, what obstacles have stood in your way in this line of work? Um, personally, now I'm facing criminal charges uh -huh. for the work that I've done, representing my, as I say, pro-democracy student activists. Mm -hmm. But not only that, but also it's the environment where other colleagues of mine, human rights defenders, lawyers, activists, who help, you know, documenting or legal defense in court, in military court, where in Thailand after the coup we have um, the use of military court to try over civilians in certain cases. We have um, the numbers, at least more than 2,000 civilians were prosecuted in military court, including those who exercise uh, the right to peaceful assembly and freedom of expression. So um, it's really it's really the, the challenges that even lawyers or defenders cannot work safely mm -hmm. and that jeopardize the whole system of justice for the victims. What message do you have for women who are currently experiencing sexual violence in their own countries? Well, I'm not really an expert on, on the sexual violence issue, but as a woman, I think Sexual violence is a disease, it's a dark disease in our society. And so one needs to try to encourage another to shed the light on that darkness. So by standing up against it, you know, we can help the society, our family and the community to, you know, get um, to overcome that kind of sexual violence. So I would encourage, you know, and in solidarity to the women who are fighting sexual violence. You are not alone, and I think it's to break the wall of silence. Great. Well, June, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Human Rights Heroes. We hope you will tune in next time and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at, at @statedrl. To learn more about State Department human rights and democracy programs, thank you.